Tonight at 11, millions of dollars are invested to enhance your safety when you're driving. But did car manufacturers overlook one little detail? You try to punch that window, it's not going to break. Team 6 investigator Willard Shepard goes into the depths of South Florida waters for a story that could save your life. My car was sinking, water was coming up. Find out if you could be trapped in your own vehicle. Watch No Way Out, tonight at 11, only on NBC6 South Florida. Underwater, flying glass, and broken windows can mean life. A way to get out of your sinking car. NBC6 South Florida was there to obtain this exclusive video. Here, a 2006 Nissan Maxima's rear window being broken. And with just one try, the punch device you so far have come to trust will break your car windows. Works perfectly on this sunroof. Glass flying, objects come floating out of the car. Both fire rescue diver Robert Hernandez and I captured the sunroof breaking. The sunroof gone, you would have a way to escape the murky waters of a South Florida canal. My car was sinking, water was coming up. Damien so Benteen recalls his escape as his car plunged into this canal. The important thing is you're trying to save your life. You can't think, am I dying? At what is this happening? No. But now, Damien worries efforts to make vehicles safer can in some instances make them more dangerous. Safety glasses is one thing, but the question is, is this safety for when a situation like mine happens? Team 6 investigators found car manufacturers are installing much stronger laminated glass, not just on the front windshield, but on every window in your vehicle. The stronger glass shatters like this, but it doesn't break or puncture. If your car hit water, would you have access to break it? And what happens is you can actually get trapped in a vehicle where your doors cannot open up. The experts at Miami-Dade Fire Rescue told us the emergency tools that can break regular glass won't punch through the stronger laminated panes underwater or on dry land. You saw what it was like. The center punch is, is, is useless against that type of material. We obtained the list of cars and SUVs that have laminated glass on all windows from the Enhanced Protective Glass Automotive Association. They are 2012 models, popular vehicles, Fords, Chrysler, foreign models, and even the Motor Trend Car of the Year for next year, the electric Tesla Model S. The association says new adoptions of laminated glass demonstrate the benefits of the product, improving safety and fuel efficiency. We went underwater with the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue dive team to see the difference this new glass can make if you need to escape. Using the punch tool, I didn't have any trouble breaking out a rear side window, but the tool didn't work when rescue divers tried to break a laminated glass on the same car. We went on the inside, punctured, went around the whole windshield itself. That laminated glass did not respond to this. On the surface, the firemen tried to break laminated panes with two devices designed to puncture glass. The tools caused spider patterns, but didn't break the glass. A concern, the experts say, in auto collisions too. If you're stuck and encapsulated inside that vehicle with fire, it's just as bad as if you were underneath the water. The federal government is taking steps to prevent passengers from being ejected from vehicles, and the laminated glass is part of that effort. The laminated glass is supposed to protect you from going through the windshield. Chrysler says the Chrysler Group vehicles meter exceed all required safety standards. Ford told us laminated glass in windows other than the windshield has been in production for years without any issues of which we are aware. Tesla indicated the innovation that went into the Model S applies to performance, handling, efficiency, and safety. In addition to you getting out, the stronger glass makes it tougher for first responders to get in. We're sitting in one of the vehicles that has the new, stronger laminated glass all around. So first responders say an emergency tool like this one would not be able to break through this glass. To find out if your car is on the list and for tips and advice on how to handle one of these situations, go over to our website, NBC6.com. For the Team 6 Investigators, Willard Shepard, NBC6, South Florida.
Information being released this morning in the Zimmerman case comes as both the prosecution and the Zimmerman defense team are required to share the information they have obtained with the other side. Now, this is part of the process as the case moves forward. Here are some of the photos we have taken out of this discovery file. This is a picture of the Keltec weapon that George Zimmerman used to shoot Trayvon Martin. The state has done a significant amount of ballistic test on this weapon and experts are prepared to weigh in on their findings. That's important because it could confirm George Zimmerman's claims about when and how he shot Martin. There are also photos of the cell phones that both Zimmerman and Martin had on them at the time of the confrontation. Martin was speaking with a female friend and Zimmerman had called 911 before he came in contact with Trayvon Martin. There are also a large number of other photos in the file being released today. The information was released just a short time ago. We're going through these pictures and also all of the legal documents. It appears that so far most of the material is coming from the FDLE and its investigation. Now the next major legal move in this case involves the stand your ground hearing. That's where Zimmerman will contend that he killed Trayvon Martin in self-defense. It's a mini trial of sorts and all of this material we are seeing today could play a crucial role then. We'll have much more on what we find tonight. Sources telling us that a police officer, a Key Biscayne police officer has been shot uh, at this location. You see an individual right there being uh, placed into the paramedics vehicle. This location is the turnpike at Hollywood Boulevard. The southbound lanes, they were allowing some people who were caught in the middle there to make a U-turn and go back northbound. But this clearly is a scene to avoid. Uh, the traffic will be backed up for a long time as police do their investigation out there, and they are combing this area. They may have set up some perimeters in this area to try to uh, locate this suspect who uh, we are being told did shoot a Key Biscayne police officer this afternoon. Team 6 investigator Willard Shepard has the exclusive details. 11 year old Kelly Lopez does the best she can on her computer. Sometimes it's hard for me to do stuff. And I say it with almost tears in my eyes. Uh, she's not the same. She's not the same Kelly that was before the three strokes. Kelly's parents say her brain damage could have been prevented if they were directed to have Kelly undergo corrective blood vessel surgery. The Lopez's told us after careful research, they trusted what they thought was the best. Dr. Travis Reisnick, a director of neurology in Miami Children's Hospital. And the chief, the chief is the top guy. What's going to receive and see my daughter? Children's Hospital is nationally renowned for its neurology and neurosurgery program. The kinds of neurological problems that are prevalent in the community. That Lopez showed us how Resnick is on Miami Children's own website touting the excellent care. The website also indicates Resnick is the chairman of the neurology department at Miami Children's. The address on his medical license is Miami Children's Location 2. And on the third floor inside the hospital, we found this sign just outside the neurology department. Resnick is the first doctor listed. Title, Chief. His email, mch.com. And his name is under the hospital's logo on Resnick's handwritten notes about Kelly. I, I feel betrayed. The family alleges Resnick told them Kelly would be fine. No surgery required, but six months later, the strokes came. Test, the family says, indicates she's performing like an eight-year-old in third grade, not a fifth grader. Resnick settled malpractice legal action against him without admitting any wrongdoing. But now the family is suing the hospital, saying that Miami children should also have to pay for their daughter's future medical needs. In its legal filings, Miami Children's Hospital says the Lopez family hasn't presented any facts whatsoever to indicate that it's been negligent or that it's liable for the actions of Dr. Resnick, any of the other doctors, nurses, or lab personnel who came in contact with Kelly. Don't tell me that he's the best of the, of the hospital. And then at the end, they say, no, he doesn't work for us. Team six investigators spoke with independent medical and legal experts who say the hospital's response should be a wake up call for everyone. The playing field is very different. Before you went into a hospital and you assumed that everybody in the hospital belonged to the hospital, that's not the case anymore. Contract workers are working in hospitals. When we went into the hospital, he has the, uh, the name tag. He, had, he was saying Miami Children's Hospital. The Lopez's say Resnick even had an official ID, but we found that's not confirmation of employment either. Dr. Powell showed us her badges. 
from hospitals where it says staff, but, but she's staff. not. So it said staff on it here, yes. but you didn't actually work for the hospital. No, no. In fact, most, most hospital facilities will say medical staff. What do you think that would lead your patients to believe? Well, of course, they would think that I work there. Um, I'm fortunate to work with so many talented people who are so passionate about what they do. The Lopez's say they feel duped by Miami Children's promotions. And if I knew that he wasn't working for the hospital, I wouldn't stay there. The Lopez's contend if they would have known what Miami Children's is saying now, Kelly's future would be different. The advice that I can give patients is to ask those questions when they treat with these medical providers, see whether they are actually affiliated with the hospital. Miami Children's would not comment further, and Dr. Resnick's attorney says he resolved his portion of this matter. Both hospitals where Dr. Powell sees patients chose not to comment. The Lopez's say Miami Children's should post clear signs, telling patients up front who's treating them. Willard Shepard, NBC6, South Florida. The no-fly list. Sounds scary, right? Willard Shepard visits a South Florida man who works for the area's largest airline and was on that very list. I just couldn't understand how you can just be put on a list for no reason. Now, this man can no longer fly or even get paid. The Team 6 investigators reach out to Homeland Security about their no-fly list. Find out what happened and if it can happen to you. A mistaken identity. Watch No Fly, No Work tonight at 11, only on NBC6 South Florida. Now at 11, the Team 6 investigators tackle the no-fly list. Two months without work because of being on the no-fly list. This South Florida man worked for one of the country's biggest airlines, but still, he landed on the government's no-fly list designed to stop terrorists. And he wasn't just prevented from flying. His employer told him he couldn't come to work, and the bills started piling up. And he says if it could happen to him, it could happen to you. Team 6 investigator Willard Shepard shows us how and what happens if it does. From his balcony, Louis Montano sees Miami International Airport. The view adding to his frustration. I'm told that I'm on the no-fly list. After 13 years working as an American Airlines gate agent in cargo operations and at its South Florida headquarters, the U.S. citizen discovered the federal government labeled him a potential terrorist, a danger to the flying public. In shock, just kind of like shock, uh, you know, how you can just be put on a list and uh, for no reason, I haven't been contacted by the government. Montano says his boss in August said he was placed on the TSA's no-fly list and sent him home with a letter saying, you are hereby withheld from service with pay effective immediately. Montano has traveled lots, Paris, Barcelona, the Great Wall of China, and returned from overseas this summer with no trouble. We contacted the airline, and American told us it must follow the TSA's rules, and it was waiting to see if there was any change in their employees' status. For six weeks, without success, Montano was on the computer, trying to get the government to reverse his status when American cut his pay, saying, you had been placed on the no-fly list. You have been placed on unpaid personal leave. And you're put on a no-fly list, and because of that, then... You know, I can't, I can't perform my duties. After 9-11, the list was developed by Homeland Security to keep potential terrorists out of the skies. After Umar Farouk Abdul Matala tried to ignite explosives in his underwear on a flight to Detroit, the government accounting office launched an investigation and earlier this year said the number of persons on the no-fly list more than doubled after the attempted attack. A mistaken identity. Maybe. But Montano says it's hard to fight because the Department of Homeland Security provides little information. This, even though it says less than 1% of those who complain have an actual connection to terrorists. In our efforts to find out exactly what happened to Mr. Montana, we reached out to the TSA, also the Department of Homeland Security. But the government eventually sent us to the FBI. And the FBI sent us a one-line response, saying it doesn't discuss the no-fly list at all. Homeland Security says this website is for those who encounter misidentification and name confusion. Outside suing, it's the sole place to go if you want off the list. They say that we're, they're checking with, the, with agencies to see if uh, it's, a, it's a mistake on their part. Montano spent weeks struggling to pay his bills and was told by American he could lose his job for good. 
Five days after we contacted the government, Homeland Security sent a letter saying he's no longer a potential terrorist, but it gave no answers as to why he was on the list. Stating security measures mandate we can neither confirm nor deny any information about you. An uneasy feeling for Montoyo, who still isn't back on the job, and warns this can happen to you too. Willard Shepard, NBC6, South Florida.